morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining me again for another live voiceover community chat here on my channel. I appreciate the time you guys take to hang out with me and to participate. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I am a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I share with you some of the tips and tricks and techniques and things that I do every day in my own voiceover business. And hopefully something I say or somebody else says uh, throughout the course of this chat will be useful to you in your endeavors. Um, if you're not new here, then you know every week we have a new poll and uh, they're typically based on questions I get often. So if you have something that uh, you want to know more about or something you want to talk about as a group, then please put it in the chat. Or if you're team replay, then put it in the comments and then uh, maybe it'll be something we talk about in the near future. But this week, the poll, we're talking about Fiverr. Because been a lot of talk about Fiverr lately. Because they've changed, uh, yet again, they've changed some things that um, as far as like the seller success rating system, right? And I'm I'm hoping that it's just a, a test. Throughout the course of my tenure on Fiverr, they've changed quite a few things just to try new things, try to make it fair and uh, transparent for not only sellers, and but also for buyers, of course, and this is just yet another another change, but I wanted to kind of take it to the basic level and ask, are you guys on Fiverr? And if you are, how much of your income comes from Fiverr? I know there was a there was a stigma attached to Fiverr years ago about it being, you know, super, uh, super like low level. I mean, everything's five bucks. I mean, how can you make any kind of income there? That's not really the case. Fiverr is a marketplace that is global. It's available to everyone all around the world. So you have a very wide market for your voice and for your services on Fiverr. And um, there are Fortune 500 companies and, you know, businesses of all sizes that do business and find freelancers on Fiverr. So it is definitely not to be overlooked. Yes, in the beginning, it's probably not the most ideal place to make money, right? Because it's just as you starting out anywhere else at, at the very beginning, you're starting at zero, you're probably not going to be charging, you know, rates that like a pro or a top rated seller would be. You sort of have to work your way up. It's almost like internship, right? So the beginning is hard to get yourself established, to get that social proof, you know, the those ratings and things. And you might need to start out at a lower rate just to get that social proof and things. But as you start to move up through the ranks, which takes time, patience, some trial and error, you can get to the level where you're starting to see business from these larger companies and even like, again, smaller companies, small, medium and large companies all around the world that can utilize your services, right? Not maybe some, sometimes not just the one, the one time. They could be repeat customers for years to come, but it takes time to build that. But I can tell you that a lot of, I can name, I'm not going to, but I can name off probably half a dozen people who started on Fiverr as one of their, as one of their beginning, like, you know, as part of their internship and learning how to uh, be successful in this industry, how to deal with clients. There's a lot of learning that I have even, you know, experienced through working with clients on Fiverr and working on Fiverr. So I wouldn't say that it's a place to base your entire career on. Absolutely not. I've, I've said it many times. You want to have many eggs in your basket. You don't want to put all of your eggs into this one basket. But it is a good place to enhance and to add to the income um, into your voiceover career, right? I'm losing my train of thought. Of course. 
But um, so it's a place to build a foundation, right? To learn and to grow, but definitely not to base your entire career on, right? Um, so let's go over to the poll and see what your answers are. So again, does any of your voiceover or audiobook income come from Fiverr? And it looks like we've got 22 votes so far. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see that no one has said yes, 60 to 80 percent. No one has said yes, 30 to 50 percent. And most of you, the vast majority of you said I haven't signed up yet. So I'm hoping today will be useful. But then 14 percent of you said yes, under 30 percent. And that is the way it should be. You shouldn't have to rely on one is going on outside? I think it's a trash truck. It's making lots of noise. But you shouldn't have to rely on one website to sustain your career, right? So it should only be that. It should only be maybe even max 30 to 50 percent, right? And then you should be looking at other avenues like direct marketing, uh, ACX, if you want to get into narrating audiobooks, if it's available in your country. Um Upwork is another great one to learn a lot from. It's another global marketplace to find work, uh, voiceover work, audiobook work. So that's good. Now, there are a lot of uh, nuances to any new website that you sign up on to make yourself available for work. And um, I think I have a feeling <laughs> throughout the conversation today, we're going to be addressing some of the things that you should be looking for. And some of the things that you should uh, be aware of, I suppose, for lack of a better word. So let's get over to the comments and see who's here. Uh, first in is Tim. Hey, Tim, you're first. Looking forward to the show. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Rustic Killbilly is here. Good morning, all. Good morning, Rustic Killbilly. I hope you're doing all right. I'm sorry if you can hear all the racket outside. <laughs> Bear338 says, why am I here this early? Because you're on it. You're on top of it. And you probably forgot the donuts. Where's my coffee and my pants? <laughs> Joy, I said, you didn't wear pants to work. Yeah, I mean, if you're a voice actor, if you work alone all day at home, I mean, pants could be optional, but it, I guess it depends on where you're working. <laughs> Dylan says, wait, we're allowed to wear pants to these talks? Dang it, Caesar, you lied to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't tell you what to wear, but of course, choose what clothing you want to wear. Rider Dude says, good morning, listening while I drive to work. Good to see you, Rider Dude. MG Stevens is here. Good morning, MG Stevens. Good morning, Angela and everyone. I clicked haven't signed up yet, but I have just no income yet. It's been only one legit inquiry who went another direction. The other inquiries were scams. And I was hoping somebody would bring that up. When you make yourself available for the first time really anywhere, and that includes social media, that includes making your email address visible to other people, there are just a lot of ill-intentioned people in the world that are trying to just pull one over on you, right? So Fiverr is just another one of those places where people see an opportunity to take advantage of someone. But don't let that discourage you. I experienced the same. So when people approach you with something that just doesn't sound right, right? And keep in mind that you have a whole community of people that you can bounce things off of, right? If someone approaches you and it maybe sounds too good to be true, but you're not quite sure, post it in your Facebook group. Email somebody that you know in the community, right? And say, hey, does this sound fishy or does this sound right? I get those emails all the time from people, you know, in my circles, in my platinum group and, you know, people that I've menteed in the past, people will reach out and say, hey, what do you think about this? And sometimes that's legit. It's just, you know, it comes off kind of the weird way. And sometimes it's a straight block them and run, <laughs> right? So you have people available to you to bounce these things off of. And I highly recommend that you become part of the community. And I've said it a million times. Join Facebook groups. Join Facebook groups for voiceover, for audiobooks. Become part of that inner circle 
right? Join my platinum group. There's a lot of, there's a, there's a large community out there that's willing to help. You just have to ask for it, right? But it's just kind of par for the course. It's just kind of part of the business. When you make yourself available online, people are going to try to take advantage, but don't let it discourage you. You did, will eventually get past that. They see someone who's brand new. So they're, they're, they're uh, relying on the fact that you're ignorant and you don't know what you're doing, right? And they're trying to take advantage of what they assume you don't know. So, but don't let that discourage you. It finally, it gets to a point where it wanes and then you start to, you know, start to build your book of business and you could, you do get past it, but you have to have patience and give it time. Dylan says, I'm in the same boat. Mm -hmm. You got to give it time. You got to just weed through them. Pamela says, good morning, all from Port of Los, Los Angeles. Good morning, Pam. Good to see you. Brian's here. Good morning, all and Angela. Good morning, Dwight. Hi, Dwight. Hello, Angela and fellow lovers of Tangelins. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'll have a few of those for you today. Facebook user, this is Colette. Good morning, Colette. Good to see you. Bear338 says, Angela is an amazing human being and an absolute light. She can 100% point you in the right direction. Then it is up to you. She will also give the encouraging foot in the boot. Hey. Yes, if, you, if you're if you working with me, I'm sure a lot of people watching that have worked with me will know that if I feel that you just need a kick between the pockets, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'll cheerlead. I'll cheerlead. I'll guide. I'll share with you everything that I know. But I can only lead the horse to water, right? But if I feel that you need just a firm hand, if you just need a, come on. Let's get this, right? I feel a lot of times it's us. It's our it's our own selves holding us uh, us back from what we want to do, right? It's a lot of times it's ourselves holding us back. And if I feel it's that's the case, then yeah. If you might need a push or a shove out of the nest, I'll do it. <laughs> but thank you for that, Bear. I appreciate that. Uh, Bear then says, Fiverr's on my radar. Maybe they have... Maybe they have my pants. I mean, it very well could be. Or it could be that that gnome that tends to send uh, steal a sock or two out of your dryer when you're drying clothes. You just have a sock, a random sock disappear. They could have your pants. You never know. But Fiverr is definitely something that I would look into. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't know, I'm a top rated seller on Fiverr. And I'm also now a freshly minted Fiverr trainer on Fiverr. So I've been there long enough to share with you what I know, I think, and have some kind of credibility <laughs> towards what I'm saying. Um, but definitely, if, if you're still kind of iffy, if you're, um, here's what I would say. At least join. It costs you nothing to join, but think carefully about the username you choose because that is the only thing that you cannot change after it's established. So what I would recommend is not like hot pink bear or something, you know, make it your name, make it the name of the business that you're going to go with. Like, for instance, mine is voice over Angela. I use that everywhere. So that way I'm easy to find anywhere, if that makes sense. So think carefully about the username you're going to choose. That way you're easily searchable and findable. Trust me. But that is the only thing you cannot change. But I would definitely join and then just take a look around. You can you can have a duplicitous username, unlike uh, ACX, where you can only sign up as like a narrator or an author. You know, have to you have to be one or the other. Fiverr, you can sign up with one account and you can be a buyer and a seller. So you can purchase from other sellers and you can also create your own gigs to offer your services online as the same user. So uh, once you sign up, then take a look around, start typing in, you know, audiobook narrators, voiceover actors, things like that, and start to see what everybody else is doing. You'll get a lot of great information and guidance and ideas from just looking at other sellers there to build your own gigs. And then of course, if you need help building your gigs, can always reach out to someone like me who's been there for a while, uh, six years now, I think, almost six years. Um, six years? 
six years, six years. And we can help you with what we've learned so far and uh, help you set up your gigs the right way. Was that a tangent? That might have been a tangent. Brian says, I'm on Fiverr and I make 0% from, from there. Of course, I've only been on there since November. Um, yes, if you're not seeing any kind of impressions, even if you're getting a lot of impressions, but no clicks, then that means that there's, you might want to consider updating your thumbnail or even the first demo on your gig. That means people are seeing you, but they're not choosing you. And I find it's usually something like either the thumbnail isn't eye catching or your, maybe not even so much your price point. But if they hover over your thumbnail to listen to you, that very first demo or the video that you post, if that's not what they need, or if it doesn't sound right, then they won't click on your gig. But if you're not getting any kind of impressions that I would consider changing up your title and your tags, because those keywords are going to help people find you. And if you're not using the right keywords, then no one's going to find you. So you're not going to get any impressions. So it just depends on what's going on with your gigs and then making a decision to change something that could help get you more impressions or clicks. <clears throat> Caesar says, hi, everyone. Hi, Caesar. Did you change your profile picture? It looks different to me. Maybe I'm goofy. Hi, everyone. I brought pants. Sorry, Dylan. Some men just want to watch the world dangle or burn. Was it burn? I forgot how the quote went. It's burn. Masonry Construction says, I use Fiverr for much less of my own VO work than Upwork. Fiverr charges 20%. Upwork is 10% plus connects. Fiverr may be 20% of VO work. Upwork for the other 80 of VO. Most of my freelance work is not VO. Well, there you go. And that is the cool thing about both of those platforms, Fiverr and Upwork, is that you're not limited to just one service or one type of service or one category of service. On Upwork, you're allowed three different profiles. One is like a... Um, maybe a general, like a general, like a, I guess, yeah, a general profile. And then you are allowed two specialized profiles. So, but those should be closely related because they'll both be reflected in your general pro profile. Now that I'm thinking about it, but Fiverr, you're, when you first sign up, you have seven gigs and a gig is basically a service. It's a service that you offer. It's a prepackaged service. And with those seven gigs, you can create seven different types of services. So if you're if you're good with um, maybe web development or something, that could be one gig. If you can take product photography for people, that could be another gig. And then voiceover could be another gig. And audiobook narration could be another gig. And then you could even break it down even further and do another gig specifically for e-learning, another gig specifically for phone greetings, another gig specifically for, you know, meditation, whatever you want to do, as long as they're different, right? They don't have to be along the same vein, podcast editing, audiobook editing, whatever you want to offer, as long as it can be delivered digitally, you know, through the internet, then that could be a service that you offer. So keep that in mind. If you have something else, like if you can do data entry, if you know how to build um, formulas for Excel, if you can, I mean, anything really. So that could be another or multiple streams of income through that one platform. Just keep that in mind. Dwight says, hey, gang, support Angela by giving a thumbs up to help her YouTube stats increase. I appreciate that, Dwight. Yes, it does. If you like or subscribe, if you're watching in replay, that definitely helps my algorithm find more people that are probably sitting in their in their living room going, God, I really want to do this, but I have no idea where to start. And they just go onto YouTube or they Google search. Hopefully they'll find me and hopefully something in there in on my channel will help them. So liking and subscribing definitely helps. <clears throat> Not just me, of course, but anybody else looking for this information. Thank you, Dwight. Uh, Caesar says, that said, hello, Angela. Why am I out of focus? Why am I out of focus? The camera's got a mind of its own. Caesar says, that said, hello, Angela. I'm still working on my socials. Got violently sick last week. I know. I, I hope you're still on the mend. This week is a holly holiday. Holy holiday. Holly is a holy holiday. So my family is driving up to spend time with me and perhaps make me less heathen. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> but that's nice. That's awesome. 
Joya says, I answered, I haven't signed up, but the truth is I have a Fiverr account, just not a VO gig. Not sure I need one. Too many books to narrate. Not enough time to work on them. You're, you're, you're a pretty busy individual. I don't know if you would need one, but I think with your, your skill in the post production aspect, you could, I mean, once you started to get done with maybe this, this audio drama project that we're working on in platinum, if you find yourself with some extra time, you could make a gig for just post-production of an audiobook. You could make a gig for adding sound design to someone else's audiobook. You could use those skills and offer them on your Fiverr account. Caesar says, I feel like Fiverr should be a multi-prong approach. A lot of it has to do with visibility. It does. I mean, obviously, it's the same thing with being on Google or being anywhere online. You have to be visible. Promote your services through social media and word of mouth pass business cards around, wear a QR code. Yeah, and that's pretty much business in a nutshell. You have to be visible. You have to be seen. You have to make yourself visible. And one of the easiest ways to do that, of course, is social media, is putting yourself in everyone's line of sight. It's not, you know, as soon as you build a website, no one's going to come, you know, breaking down your door. You have to still promote yourself. You still have to make yourself visible. There's a lot of proactivity in owning a business. You're absolutely right. Tycon Delar says, I love your Fiverr videos. Well, thank you. They are very helpful. I would love to make an extra 1K per month using Fiverr. And you absolutely can. You absolutely can. I think, um, I don't know what they're doing now, but a, about a year ago, I knew of a couple of people who were making easy 20K a month on Fiverr pretty crazy. I'm not at that level, but I mean, some people just phew, take right off and do really, really well. And some people, it takes a little bit longer, right? Everybody's different. It's the same thing with anywhere else, right? Your voice is not always going to be perfect for every job. And it also depends on how much work you put into making yourself visible. You have to be visible and that's not going to happen on its own. You got to put in the work to do that, right? Um, but I think for the most part, most people that I know uh, consistently, just rough estimate, consistently make somewhere between three and six or seven grand a month just through Fiverr, right? If you put in the work, you can get there. But of course, some people are making a lot more than that. But yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to. Um, I'm thinking of doing a like a Fiverr deep dive webinar. Would you guys be interested in that? Should I bother putting that together? Would you guys be like, oh, God. <laughs> or I don't know, that way you, it could be more interactive than just making like a one sided video. Do you guys be interested in that? Uh, Bear says post it in the platinum group. It's the best shameless plug. Post what in the platinum group? Did I miss something? I don't have a great memory. <laughs> Masonry Construction says, on Fiverr, I get requests, and most of them are of no value. Even so, you have to formally decline, or you get penalized by Fiverr as being non-responsive. It's good for what it is. takes time. Yes, you do have to be on top of it. It is very strict, and everything you do is measured and taken into account. So Fiverr is a lot of work, but it's for a reason. It's because they're they're keeping track of all the metrics of everything because they don't want to promote or boost people who aren't active and who aren't taking care of the people that they spent millions of dollars to get to their site. So if you're not going to take care of those people that they spent so much money to acquire, then they're not going to boost or promote you. So there's a lot of things that go on with Fiverr in terms of, you know, the requests and then um, the buyer matches and then people at your inbox and then people, you know, uh, placing orders and things. There's a lot to manage, but you just have to realize it's all for a purpose and you have to be ready for that. So it does take a little bit more babysitting than some, probably some other sites, but can be worth it if you put in the effort. Caesar says, from my experience, any business endeavor shouldn't be treated like a chicken egg. You just don't sit on it and wait for it to hatch. Absolutely. You, there, you have to be proactive to have your to make your business thrive, to be successful. You can't just sit back and 
expect it all to come to you because it's not. It's not. You got to go get it. You have to go get it. I am Paxima says, uh, hey, Angela, good morning. How are you today? I am fabulous. Thank you for asking, Paximus. Thanks for streaming. Well, you're welcome. I'm under the weather today. Oh, no. But at, at home resting and able to be here with you all. This stream is helpful and I thank you and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. Well, I'm glad that you're here, but I'm sorry that you're not feeling well. It seems to be going around again like the ick. So I'm I'm sorry for that. But I'm glad you're here. Bear uh, 338 says, yeah, Caesar, don't just sit on it. Take action. That's right. That's right. Masonry Construction says, um, am I blurry again? Come on, camera. Get the program, camera. Well, I guess I'm going to be blurry. When somebody puts a short script in their request to you and asks you to audition, don't do it. You have no control at that point, yet the requester now has your voice to use. Yes, with the... Uh, with the whole AI movement, I don't, um, I don't offer, I don't offer downloadable demos anymore through Fiverr. If someone asks for, I mean, years ago, yes, but in the last year, if someone asks for something to download to share with a client, I, I have to tell them here, just, you're going to have to show them my demos that are on Fiverr, you know, available to listen to at any time. I don't send anybody anything. Um, short samples, complimentary samples, uh, depends on a lot of factors. If I do that, like if it's for an audio book and I've done the research on the client and I see that they are an actual author, then I will. But I mean, it all go comes down to you doing your part too, right? If, um, if it's something that I can see, if I've already, um, seeing that this client has is legit. Maybe I've done some research on them. I found the company they work for and I found them. I mean, it just requires work on your part. And then every, every client or every situation is going to be case by case. So again, this is not like hitting an easy, this, there's nothing easy about having a business. And then again, using Fiverr, it's not easy, but can be well worth it if you invest the time and the patience to do it, right? It's all going to be case by case. Uh, Nigel says, good afternoon, all from the UK. Good afternoon, Nigel. Thank you for being here. Joe Pay says, sure, glad you help us even for Pickens, Pickensy, Pickensy, from Pickens, South Carolina. <laughs> Dylan says, don't make jokes about your Fiverr username in the Platinum Group. It'll get you labeled for life. <laughs> Bear338 says, I am still finding my business name, ACX and Fiverr, are going to be my first sites to sign up for. And I signed up first <clears throat> on ACX. And then after ACX, I signed up on Fiverr and Upwork pretty much at the same time. And I just left it at those three because I wanted to get a feel for how these sites worked, how much time I needed to invest in these. And then I quickly learned that Fiverr takes a lot of my, took a lot of my time in the beginning, making sure that I responded to people, that I was, you know, looking at the information. But uh, Upwork's not as stringent as Fiverr is, but and you'll also find that more people do better on Upwork than they do on Fiverr and vice versa. It's it's kind of the same for everybody that I know. Like I do really well on Upwork, but nothing on Fiverr. Or I do really well on Fiverr, but nothing on Upwork. I guess it just depends on what works better for you, right? What you're more willing to spend your time on cultivating too, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, Leslie's here. Hey, Leslie. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Still on the fence about signing up, watching your videos, and these sessions are helping me inch closer. Well, good. I'm hoping that um, something in here is going to help you decide either way, because I'm not saying definitely do it. I'm saying that if you're even thinking about it, the sooner that you can get established, the better, obviously, right? Because if someone's looking for a voice artist, and then they punch in those search terms onto Fiverr and then your gig is shown along with a page of other people and they decide upon you versus somebody else because your voices are similar. 
Um, and the price point is the same. Everything else is the same. But one person has reviews or it has been there longer and you had just signed up yesterday. I mean, it's the same thing that we do to clients. If a client just signed up yesterday and wanted to offer me this big, gigantic job, I might be a little bit hesitant because I might think they're a scammer. Same thing with you. So if you're even thinking about signing up with Fiverr, I would just do it. That way that signed up date is ticking away while you're slowly building your platform and your uh, gigs, right? So you don't look like you're, you just signed up yesterday and people might count that as, you know, you being scammy or trying to, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think you guys know what I mean. Uh, Tim says 15 impressions. Okay, so if you have 15 impressions, I would definitely take a look at your title and your keywords, like the, the tags on each of your gigs. And make sure that they align with voiceover terminology. You got to think about it from the client's perspective. So if a small, medium, or large size business was looking for my services, what words would they use? And then use that search bar, right? Make yourself a buyer. View Fiverr as a buyer, which you can do in your in the profile, right? Drop down. And then start typing in words into the search bar as if you were a client voice artist, narrator, audiobook, fo phone greeting, right? And see what words are at, uh, um, automatically populated in the search bar because those are the most common searched keywords. Use some of those, right? Don't use words like energetic or comfortable. I can't, I'm never going to, <laughs> I'm never, as a buyer, never going to use those words to find a voice artist or to find a photographer or to find, you know what I mean? Use words that your client's going to use to find you in your titles and your keywords. Tags. Why do I keep saying keywords? Tags. Masonry Construction says, Fiverr allows you to publish seven gigs initially, I think. That said, sign up as a VO plus some other skills. I write articles, do some construction consulting as well. Multiple skills will help anxiety. Not only that, but if you have a skill that is in demand, digital marketing, you know, stuff like that, content creation for social media, if you have something like that as a skill, that all of that traffic to that one gig could potentially boost the traffic to all the other gigs because that tells the algorithm that you have something that's in demand. So they're going to, I'm not going to say they are going to, they could promote you more often if you're in demand, if you have skills that are in demand, right? So having a cornucopia of, you know, different skills uh, available with your seven gigs. And as you move up in the seller levels, they give you more and more gigs to use. Uh, as a top rated seller, I have 30, I have 30 gigs that I can utilize. So, right, so seven is still a pretty good number to start with. So you have seven different skills to start with and use them all. Uh, Tim says no other contact. Uh, it sounds like we need to take a look at your Fiverr gigs and maybe update them a bit. Bear338 says, Leslie, it will be the best money you will ever spend. Um, for what? For signing up? I must have missed something. Caesar says, it is indeed a new profile photo. Part of my online presence refresh. My first photo was an untreated studio with the lace curtains. What's wrong with lace curtains, man? Ain't nothing wrong with lace curtains. Leslie Sly Miller says, I signed up for Fiverr in February and I'm only allowed four gigs until I'm level one now. That's interesting. You should have seven. Unless they change something again. But as far as I know, you should have seven. Interesting. They could have changed it again. Didn't tell anybody. Dwight says, Angela, I just pulled the trigger and signed up for a three-month membership. Um, no more excuses. Taking the next steps. A three-month membership? For what? A three-month membership. Oh, mentorship, not membership. <laughs> I was like, what, what do you know that I don't? <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, uh, after this is over, I have to run and go pick up my son from school because it's a half day again. And then once I get back to my studio after I pick him up, then um, I'll get with you and see what's a good day to meet up every week. Well, that's awesome. I'm happy to work with you. 
Masoner Construction says, Fiverr does a good job at showing you data analysis of how your various gigs are doing, even at the most basic level without signing up for Seller Plus or anything like that. They do give you enough information to sort of glean enough information to learn about, you know, what needs to change and where. Uh, it shows impressions and clicks, and you can also see which of your gigs are working and which are not. Absolutely. That's pretty much how I worked it before I was part of the Seller Plus program. Finally made it, JCC AOL. Today we have San Francisco sourdough and hummus, just in case people are tired of donuts. It sounds amazing. <laughs> Brian says, your camera may be AI and in rebellion from humanity, Skynet's baby. It could be. Very well could be. Leslie says, oh, Bear, I'm happy to say it took me no time to sign up for Platinum Group. Love this group. And Angela is a great coach. Still sizing up the fiber situation. Oh, okay. I'm with you. Thank you for that, Leslie. JCC AOL said, I saw a short clip with Anthony and he said, whatever you do, make sure you record every day. Yes, absolutely. That being said, on average, how long do you record and do you do it all at once or short segments? It really just depends on what I'm doing, what the weather is like, uh, how much I have going on for that day. Um, usually for longer projects, if, because again, I live in the desert. So in the summertime, the air conditioner's on 90% of the day. So if I have to record in, sh in segments and then take a break to cool down and turn the air conditioner back on, then, you know, that's what it's got to be. And then edit while it's on. But if it's, you know, in months like this in the spring and the fall where, you know, the HVAC isn't on 24 seven, then maybe I can get some more stuff done. And also I work with you know, mentees throughout the day. I have multiple meetings throughout the day. I'm also planning a wedding right now. So my plate is kind of overfilling. So it just really depends on how much time I have every day to dedicate to a certain project. And if it has to be cut up into segments, then it has to be cut up into segments, right? Do what you got to do. There's no like right way to do it. Angel says, yes, please. Oh, for the Fiverr webinar? Oh, okay. Yes, please. Fiverr 7. I'm on board. Teach us. Oh, okay. Well, cool. I'm single. Okay, awesome. All right. I would watch the webinar. Okay. All right, then. Then I will um, put together some sort of a agenda curriculum outline something, and then I'll see if I can start putting that into place. Okay. Sweet. Leslie Sly, Miller, uh, bleh, bleh. Leslie Sly Miller says, I absolutely need help with my fiber. I've got lots of the basics down, but I need help with getting impressions. Okay. Yep. It's definitely something we can talk about. Tycon Delar says yes to webinar. Also. Okay, cool. Uh, Tiff Stella Reed says, hi, Angela. So I wanted to get started on fiber, but people deter me because they say it shows that I'm low value to clients. I just want to get started somewhere and start making money. What do you think? I can tell you that I started on Fiverr and I don't, no one's ever called me low value. <laughs> I made enough in my first two years on Fiverr to fire my boss and go full time. And if I was low value, then how could I do that? Right? I think that has a lot to do with the stigma. I, I can tell you that a lot of people, again, that I know started on Fiverr just as I did to build a foundation, to learn a lot about this industry, to learn about how to deal with clients, to learn a lot about formatting and your, you know, what your DA does. It's hands-on training and it was fine. I mean, it would, did wonders for my, my uh, career. So I, it's really going to come down to what you feel is right for your business. Because again, everything that I say is not like, you know, gospel. You have to go listen to everybody else. Get a lot of different varying opinions and then make your own decision about what you want to do with your business. Because it's your business. You do what you want with it. You are the CEO. You are the main head honcho. You do what you want. Bear338 says, I did notice on Fiverr it states how long it takes for the artist to respond, and most are around an hour for response. 
Yes, because that initial um, that initial message from a buyer to your inbox as a seller, you need to respond right away. You are being timed on how quickly you respond. And they're only really timing you on that first response. So it could be tricky when you have somebody on the other side of the planet send you a message and then, you know, you wake up in the morning. But it's going to be an, an average, just like everything else. Every other stat that they clock you on on Fiverr is on average on, a, I think, a 60 day rolling. So obviously respond right away to people if you can. Um, but that's usually what they mean. Is, is about a, an hour. And then also, I think that could also take into consideration how quickly you respond to people. Uh, orders, orders that come in, because you need to respond to those. Say, hey, thank you for the order. If you have any questions about that order, then, you know, ask them at that time. But for the most part, I just tell them I have a, a like a like an auto response that says, hey, thank you for the order. I'm going to take a look at this. If I have any questions, I'll reach out to you. I'll have this for you as soon as possible. Right. But you need to respond to people when they reach out to you because, again, Fiverr's not going to want somebody on their site that's not going to take care of these clients that they spend so much money to acquire. So if you look at it that way, you know, makes sense. Angel says, would the Fiverr deep dive be for the Platinum Group only? No, what I'm thinking of doing for the webinar is having a webinar... Um, I hate to say two different price points, but I'm thinking of giving my platinum group a discount, like a discounted ticket fee, like it's going to be tiered, right? And then I'm also thinking of having an option where you could be uh, live asking questions and then also have an option to just be like a fly on the wall. You can't ask questions, but you can listen and watch, right? So I'm th I'm thinking of a few different things, but I haven't really decided. But no, it'll be for anybody and everybody, who wants to participate in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Tip Stella Reed says, I just find it awful to keep people from making money when they are in need because they need to hire a coach and find high-paying clients when that honestly takes longer to achieve, if, if that makes sense. It absolutely does make sense. Because the people that are, when people tell you to not do something because it makes you look bad or, you know, this and that, they're probably already established and then started in a completely different manner than what is available to us now. So there, again, there are many different paths to get to what you call success. There are many different paths to get there. This is just one. And so if you're finding that, yeah, it's going to be a bear, it's going to take a lot of work, but I think Fiverr could be a thing that brings me money now while I'm upgrading all of my equipment, while I'm paying for a coach, while, you know, I mean, do what you want to do. But income is ultimately the motivator, right? We got to have money coming in to put food on the table to pay the bills. I mean, so it could be something that does work out for you. I mean, this is exactly the path that I took. This is ex exactly the path that I took. I signed up with ACX, then Fiverr, then Upwork. And here I am, six years later, four years full time. Why not? Dwight says, that's a hell yeah on the Fiverr deep dive. Cool. Awesome. Brian says, so don't do auditions through Fiverr? Um, I think it just depends on what it is, who it is. You know, do a little bit of Scooby-Doo on your end. Look, look up the person. You know, you can look at their profile on Fiverr, see if they have any reviews, see if they have any gigs. You can re read their bio, you know, that bio we all hate to put in there. They have one too. You can read that. If it just seems off-putting or odd, then respond to them saying, you know, I'm not, maybe I'm not doing any business right now, but thank you for reaching out and then block them <laughs> if you think they're scammy. Um, if they're really, like, if it's clearly a scam, like they're sending you a QR code or something, then report them, then block them. Um, but respond first, say no, thank you, then report, then block, because <laughs> they definitely want a response to everything. So I think auditions are going to be um, really case by case. But um, I still do them. I still do samples, but I don't read what they send me in its entirety. That I think is key. If they send you a section that they that they want to hear, I don't read the entire thing. I just, I don't, I don't give them everything that they want. 
I always tell them if they ask for a sample, I'll say, sure, I'll be happy to provide you with a free comp or a complimentary short sample. So I tell them up front, the expectation is going to be short. So if they send me a couple of paragraphs, I'm going to read maybe a few sentences and that's it because that is a short sample. Old Slacker says, hi, Angela. I just got out of the hospital after a close brush with death. What? I missed these talks. How are you doing? I, in relation, I think I'm fine. What What happened? Good lot. What? Bear338 says, I am waiting on my photographer so I can get my web page finished. Also, I will be posting a sample on our feedback channel. Nerves are high. Ain't nothing but a chicken wing. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Right, Bear? Temporary. You'll get past it. This too shall pass. Caesar says, make sure your glorious beard is very visible on your website. Yes. Leslie says, uh, how long did it take you to start earning money on Fiverr? It was probably within the first couple of months. It was kind of like um, I said, I went through a, well, no, that came later. So I set up my profiles and then I didn't really know what to expect or how anything would happen. So after I had my my gig set up, I just kind of was like, okay, I moved on to focusing on ACX and doing audiobooks there. And then like out of the blue, I got, you know, some people started to talk to me and ask me questions. Because again, Fiverr does the ebb and flow, right? They will promote you one week and then they'll promote other people. So they're trying to give everybody an equal shake. So every once in a while, when you're on the high, when you're in the flow, right, then you, you'll you have some people reach out to you and maybe even place an order. And then it just very slowly builds from there. But it would, I'd say a couple months, maybe, before I started to see anything. Dwight said, Leslie, the best money you can spend on inching forward in your career is to join Angela's Platinum Group. For 20 bucks, you get more resources in the Discord group than any other concentrated info source. I have to wholeheartedly agree. I think what we have, the value in just the Discord is far exceeding the monthly membership fee. And I'm, I'm not just saying that because it's mine. because It's gospel. I mean, it's it's the truth. It's It's amazing, the group that we have. Very proud of this group. Leslie Sly Miller says, have they changed the level system recently? They have. It's um, the rating and they just kind of reformulated it and renamed it a little bit, but it's pretty close to the same. Uh, I think a lot of the new rating system depends heavily on the survey that the client gets after the order, the one that we never see the results of. So again, always be polite, professional on Fiverr to everybody because also the way that you handle clients even if they're scammers and things like that everybody they take all of your reactions and the way you handle business there into account when you're up for top rated seller review right if they're looking to promote you to top rated seller it's not an automatic promotion they take all of your uh, what's the word i'm looking for but they'll take everything that you have done up until that point into consideration before they promote you so <clears throat> if you just do the right thing and speak to everybody politely and professionally, you should be fine. Phil Clare says, what exercises do you do for strong toral tongue and oral motor? You can do warm-ups if you like. I think for the most part, I just stretch. I have TMJ, so I stretch uh, the muscles in my jaw quite a bit before I get started. And then also... Um, Usually the first script of the day, I'll just read through that a few times just to get warm. But it's really up to you if you like tongue twisters, if you like, you know, going through the ranges in the, what is that, like the vocal, uh, I can't think of the word. I have a whole book. You know what? This would be a great opportunity to share this again. I haven't shared this in a while. This book has got a lot of these warm-ups in it. This book here, The Voice Over Voice Actor. This is a great book to have on your desk. It's got a lot of great information in it from auditions to warm-ups to, I mean, just about anything you can think of. It's a great book to have. Caesar says, I have enormous plans for Fiverr. Actually, I'll be leveraging my experience in copywriting, graphic design, marketing, and now sound engineering. I hope it'll pay off. I won't jinx it, but I think that is a great start, to be honest, Caesar. 
I, but I have a good feeling about this. And if by some miracle I succeed beyond my wildest dreams, I'll be happy to share the recipe. Um, not by some miracle, if and when, let's just say when, when it happens, then you will share, right? Uh, Facebook user, this is Colette. She says, webinar sounds good to me. Good. Good. I'm glad. Phantom Voice says, I'm back, baby. Good to have you back, Phantom Voice. Ryan says, so how long does the Platinum Group meet on Thursday night? Usually about two hours. <clears throat> it used to be an hour, but it's moved to two hours now. And I'd say uh, there's a good 25 to 30 people that join every week, I would say to work on the different exercises and things that we that we do. Do you have playback if you can't? Yes, I every one of them is recorded and they're all posted on a page on my website for you to view and they're all there. So you could go back and watch any and all of them if you wanted to. What happens in the Discord is their feedback. Yes, anything you can think of. You can watch other voice artists work. You can watch other people edit. You can ask questions. You can post samples for feedback. We also have an audio drama that we're doing as a group by one of our glorious authors who has written an entire story, a book, and each member is a character. And we're going to make an, like a, like an audio drama out of that with sound design and everything. We have all kinds of stuff and there's al almost always somebody available to ask questions. We have a book club. We have the spice rack. We have, you know, pets, birthdays. I mean, anything you can think of pretty much is there on discord, any kind of support, help right encouragement it's you can find it on our discord channel it's amazing tycon delar says i'm drawn to your path because it mirrors a lot of what i'm going through full-time job family not pushing to take acting classes and get formal coaching before starting it pretty much exactly where i was at the start for sure Caesar says the Platinum Thursday meetings run for two hours the video on demand gets posted on angela's website the next day a little before noon on Discord, a lot of things happen. Uh, Angela's Discord has gear discussions, software and sound engineering discussions, feedback on performance, a practice room, and other relevant VO interests, including a spicy chamber. Mm -hmm. Masonry Construction says everyone should have samples at the ready. Send those. Don't audition. I refer people to my Brick and Block podcast. 20 episodes there. Even doing a 30-second audition takes too much time. It depends on your situation. If you if you have the time, then do it, right? But this is something great to keep in mind. Have samples on hand. Joya says, one ending chapter left to write and the draft to the audio drama will be complete. I just need to add another cliffhanger with the vampires. A vampire cliffhanger. Caesar says, Angela's Discord actually has some truly landmark experts with a wide range of life experience. Gear enthusiasts like Caesar, sound engineering experts, audiobook lovers, techies, geeks, hobbyists, and the lot. Yep, something for everybody, I think, pretty much there. Uh, Brian says, I have my kids on Thursday and I hate taking their time that night, so I can't take two hours, but I want feedback and practice. Would it still be worth it? I can't tell you if what I offer is going to be worth any kind of dollar amount to you. That's really your prerogative to under to uh, make that decision. But I think to have um, a group of 60 or so people available to give you support and feedback on things. And then also keep in mind that the meetings are recorded, but you can also on Discord just about at any time of the day, any day of the week, you might have somebody popping into one of the the VO rooms where they're either recording an audiobook and you can chat with them or they're editing podcasts. I get in there a lot and edit podcasts so you can get in there and watch and I explain what I'm doing. So there is a whole lot of value to just the Discord channel in, in and of itself apart from the Thursday meetings. So if that sounds like it could be worth it to you for 20 bucks. <laughs> Uh, Miriam says, hello, all. I didn't choose any of the options since mine is none of my audio income. None of my audiobook income is from Fiverr. And if you do narrate audiobooks, definitely have an audiobook gig on Fiverr. Just remember that audiobook rates are a little bit trickier to set up on your Fiverr gig. It's not going to be the same uh, gig pricing structure as any other normal voiceover because we have we get paid per finished hour right 
for audiobooks. So it's going to be a little bit different price wise than any other voiceover gig. But I would say that currently, um, most of my audiobook work comes from either people reaching out to me directly through my website that find me on YouTube. So social media, don't overlook it. And then also Fiverr and Upwork, I get, I don't do any audiobooks on ACX. I'm not really active on ACX directly right now. Most of my audiobooks come from those two, three sources. So don't overlook it. Joy says, hello, Angela and company. What else besides audiobooks could a voiceover do on Fiverr? Anything voiceover. I narrate PowerPoints, uh, e-learning, phone greetings, um, meditation, lots of meditation, um, documentaries, commercials, everything that you can think of, podcast intros and outros, DJ drops, um, user-generated content voiceover for like TikTok and Instagram, anything and everything you could think of, YouTube videos. Um, Getty Gibbs says, how do you keep talent agencies from finding out that you're working part-time on Fiverr? I mean, you're going to have to tell them. You're going to have to be transparent with them. And I think it's going to come down to what's what that talent agency has on their contract. If you're exclusive to a certain area, then you might have to decide which one is, is better. Right. But I think a lot of the agents, I don't have an agent. I don't, I honestly don't know if I ever will. So it's even up to you if you want to have an agent or not. I mean, it's, you're just going to have to take one with the other, but it's really going to come down to you and what you want. You have to decide what you want to do and then follow that path. If you want to, before signing up on Fiverr, you can reach out to a few agencies and see what they have to say, right, about it. And some of them might tell you, oh, don't do it. But I think that in part, they might tell you not to do it because they don't want to lose that business. I'm just saying. I don't know. Masonry Construction says, uh, don't think twice about signing up for Fiverr Upwork. No money is at stake. Remember, it's a long-term play. It is. It, that is definitely a marathon. Angela has been working at VO for six years. No overnight success. Absolutely true. Caesar says, oh, hi, Joy. Character voices, YouTube videos come to mind, commercial work, IVR, lots of stuff. I think meditation things, positive affirmations, celebrity impressions. Yeah, there's so much, so much you can offer on Fiverr and Upwork. Brian says, with all the stuff on Discord, how do y'all get anything done? <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> Caesar says uh, to Brian, we're not there 24-7. We pop in and out. Life still continues. Discord does uh, not consume. In fact, Discord can potentially augment. A tribe is important. Like-minded people are valuable. 110% agree. Dwight says, to exemplify the Discord groups, some of my peers challenged us to practice spicy narrating to get comfortable with it. I can F-bomb easily, but add a simple kiss disgust, and I turn red. Wasn't bad. Caesar says to Dwight, wasn't bad at all. I believe it was described as sweet romantic. Give yourself a pat on the considerably healed, I hope, shoulder. <laughs> Bear says, uh, there are always a few people on Discord, and the knowledge levels alone are priceless, in my opinion. I have received 99% of my help there, and then put that into practice on Thursdays. Absolutely. We come at you from all angles. <laughs> Dwight says, I think my point on the Discord topic is there is great support and a variety of everything you might want some help with. Ideas are abundant, and solutions are available. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love my I love my platinum group and the discord. I'm so glad you guys talked me into having one because it's it is it's outstanding. I can't imagine not having it. I mean, that was a great idea. Thank you, Christy and Craig for mentioning it. I'm glad you guys put it all together. I really appreciate you guys for for doing that. But I have go I've got to go. I got to go pick up the kiddo from school. It's an early day today. So I'll see y'all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And again, if you have something that you want to learn more about or just discuss as a group, put it in the comments and uh, I'll see y'all next week. Bye. <laughs>